sometimes it only rings twice, sometimes 14 times. I never know when to walk out. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody this morning. Brittany, you're getting faster. You're going to be able to run that 100-yard dash pretty quick and keep after him. <laughs> Before we begin our worship this morning, are there any, uh, yep, we got the hands in the river ready, any announcements? Jackie. I just wanted to make a correction. The show, the first hymn is 723, it's actually 722. I think Bill Guidance will like to sing that one a little better. What page is it? 722. Okay, first hymn is 722. Well, that wouldn't be the first time that went upside down. 722, the first hymn. Bill. Um, the elders have gotten together, and uh, the pastor, of course, everybody knows about is retiring in the bottom, so we're going to have a retirement picnic for him. And so we've established a committee, and we're in the work of figuring everything out. And we're just going to be meeting and all those details. But um, we'll put a sign up. When is it, Bill, at the end of the August? The 30th of August. That's the last time we're on. I don't know a thing about it. I do now. I presume when he said gifts, uh, you know, things, riding saddles, horses, gold, silver, you know, stuff like that. (laughs) I don't think anybody heard him say that. (laughs) (laughs) Any other announcements? meeting to approve the school budget immediately after worship. So if you're a voting member and want to stay for that meeting, just stay seated and then we'll... Harry's real good at getting meetings started and getting them stopped, so it should happen real quick. Any other announcements? <clears throat> I've got one. We have a slight change in the communion process with the independent or individual cups. Um, see the waste paper basket? We're switching from glass to plastic. Uh, the plastic ones are working in the metal containers. So if you're taking communion with the individual cups, just keep hold of your cup. And when you leave the altar on your way down, just throw it in the waste paper basket. That will simplify things much better for the, for the ladies who have to clean everything up afterwards. And it allows less handling. Any questions? One of the elders is going to stand on duty with the fly swatter if you don't. Not really. Not really. <laughs> if there aren't any more announcements, let's begin our worship with our first hymn, 722.
our worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 3, page 184 in our maroon colored hymnal, uh, the Lutheran Service Book, page 184. Would the congregation please stand? We make our beginning this beautiful morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us all draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us all forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, Almighty God, Merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you have not promised mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings you have, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake, does forgive us of all of our sins. And to those who believe upon Him, He gives His power to become His children and He promises to you His Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. Grant this Lord unto us all. Amen. Our intro for this morning will be parsed half verse by half verse, we will omit the glory of Patri and sing it immediately after the song. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Blessed are the people who know the festival shout. The who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor our heart is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord. Our King is the Holy One of Israel. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all
to go, we confessed our sin and asked God to forgive us of that sin. He has indeed done that, forgiven us. He sees us as holy. That just blows my mind every time I think of something like that. But he sees us as holy, so now it's time for us to kind of celebrate and be happy about that fact. So, we welcome everybody with us on video and we extend to them God's peace. And everybody here, turn around. If you're by the camera, wave at the camera. I know somebody's watching there. And somebody <laughs> snuck a kiss in already. That's not allowed. <laughs> Greet each other to say hi with a handshake, with a big wave. Greet them in the peace of our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us together pray the collect for today, which is printed out in your worship insert sheet. Together we pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading appointed for the Fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I have to look for this. Third Sunday after Trinity, fourth Sunday after Pentecost. You know, we keep calendars confused. It's from Jeremiah chapter 28. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord, and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who, proceed, who preceded you, preceded you, and me from ancient times, prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 7. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you have also died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law, or at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say that the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet the law had not said you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin. 
and through the commandment that might become sinful beyond measure. This also is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the singing of the Alleluia and proclamation of the gospel. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies shall will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together, let us confess the faith into which we believe and were baptized in the words of the Nicene Creed recorded on page 191. Together we all say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, a very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the cross of Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and his very day he rose again according to the scriptures. And ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue in our worship with our next hymn.
grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His Spirit. Maybe if you've been kind of keeping track, for the last couple of weeks we have found ourselves in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And this 10th chapter is an important chapter in this book because in it we find Jesus giving his disciples, giving to us as we read it some 2,000 years later, some very important advice and instructions. During this 10th chapter, in fact, it's all nearly Jesus' proclamation. If you get the red print edition, you'll see it's nearly all printed as Jesus' very own words. But first of all, he sends his disciples out, his apostles I'm not going to make the distinction between the two tonight, but he sent those people out, those 12 he's talking to, his 12 disciples, into what we, we might call the mission field today. Secondly, he commissions them, and he grants them authority. We have talked about that a couple of weeks ago. He gives them authority to drive out demons, to heal the sick, and to even raise people from the dead. The same authority that he had. Now, the words in our gospel lesson that were read before us this morning were originally, like I said, spoken by Jesus to prepare his disciples for some pretty hard times, for some tough times, for some major persecution. We talked about that a little bit last week. If you remember, he had told them to proclaim from the housetops what had been whispered to them in private. And he told them about what to expect from that. And he warned them that if they did that, that their very lives might be in danger. And indeed they were. He also told them not to be afraid of those who would kill the body, but instead fear the one who could kill the body and soul both. So all of his language that we hear, it sounds awful tough today in the New Testament and all through this whole chapter. But he always begins and ends with... Do not be afraid. And indeed, tradition tells us that each and every one of those disciples, with the exception of one, except for John, did die a martyr's death. In his warnings to his disciples and to us, like I said a minute ago, Jesus doesn't just leave us in a perch, hands out the bad news and walks away. That isn't what he does. He also gave some very comforting news. He gave us reason not to fear what he was talking about. He tells us that we are so valued that he even knows the number of hairs on our heads. Now, for some of you, that's not very much to know. But he also says he knows when every sparrow drops from the sky. So what he's telling us is that God takes notice and holds regard for each and every one of us. If he knows the number of hairs on our head, and when a bird falls from the sky. I said earlier that this chapter is an important one, and while I do need to rightly discern and convey what Jesus has said here, I have somewhat of a dilemma problem this morning. Earlier I have two, and it's not the first time. How do I rightly preach and discern this text to myself and to all of you in a world in such as we live in today? Now, take time to explain that a little bit to you. My problem is that while I don't want this sermon to merely be a history lesson in the lives of those disciples and how they died, nor is it the point of this sermon to report the millions of Christians who face death even in our days. I'm going to turn this around a little bit. While these are wonderful stories, and many even may inspire us to want to do better, to pray that we would be just as faithful as those apostles were. The truth is that as wonderful as they may be, they may do us no more good than a motive for a good movie or a song that brings tears to our eyes. Because you see, as things are in our world today, who live in the good old United States of America, there isn't even a hair's worth difference or should say that difference, but there isn't a hair's worth of comparison between what's going on in the rest of the world and how Christians are being persecuted compared to the essence we sit and live and breathe in right now, even with the COVID. 
I really don't expect anybody I don't know how to say this even, to grasp what I'm saying this morning. I don't know if we know the kind of peril that God was talking about in the gospel lesson. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. You remember what he was talking about? He's talking about enemies in our own family. I'm starting to experience that. Maybe you are too. I guess in the long run what I'm saying is we need to hold fast to our faith because the end is that coming pretty fast, I believe. But when you compare the United States of America to the rest of the world, I don't think Americans get what we're looking at here. So you see, if I keep this sermon in the Lord's text at that level, then what I'm saying is rather safely removed from where you and I live. And that, unfortunately, that's what a lot of soft Christians in the United States want to hear these days and nothing more. So the real question is, does this text, does our gospel reading for this morning have any meaning for you and for me other than perhaps a lesson about the persecuted church abroad that we hear our missionaries talking about all the time? That's easy to listen to while they're talking to us, but I wonder how many of us would follow one of them into that battle. It's a lot easier to pull your billfold out, isn't it? And yet God speaks to us in stronger language than just easing our own conscience and sending somebody over there to spread the gospel. So the real question, does this text have any meaning for you or for me other than that kind of thing? If we are to take the Lord's word seriously, then perhaps we should come to an understanding or a reckoning of exactly where it is that you and I live and how we may or may not function as a Christian. How would Jesus apply his words to you and me who live in a nation where we can choose to worship in the way we want to worship in any way, fashion, shape that we would like? Most of this world, Christianity, these days people are getting their heads whacked off for it again. In some ways, Christianity is very strong in America right now. I mean, turn your TV set up. I'm going to be a little facetious this morning. It's quite popular for professional athletes, entertainers, and even politicians these days to testify of their Christianity and their faith, even though it's getting less and less so. But you see, there are other things going on besides these momentary testimonials. In many instances, our history is being rewritten or maybe not written at all in such a truthful fashion or a complete manner. Some of your children's textbooks right now, these days, tell the story of America setting, settling by the pilgrims and the Puritans without even mentioning their religious commitments. Now I know my education at that point has been removed 67 years what they're getting today, but that's kind of like saying, let's make some bread without any wheat. I mean, think about this, folks. How can one tell of Plymouth Rock without telling of the truth that compelled those remarkable people to even come to America? And how can one understand the story of freedom in America without telling the story of Rhode Island in its place in religious freedom? Those people stood up and then they laid down and died to protect and gain that for each and every one of us. And it's been protected ever since. I'm not sure it's even in that thought, a matter of thought anymore. It makes me sad that a majority of people who so unconsciously use what our nation has provided don't even know that religious bodies, Catholic, Methodists, Presbyterians, and Lutherans, and others have built some of the great hospitals in America long before city and states were doing it and that Catholics and Protestants alike were providing orphanages and homes for the aging before government or profit agencies ever even thought about it. And that long before there were state universities and colleges, the Presbyterians, the Quakers, the Catholics, the Methodists, and the Lutherans were providing advanced education wherever and whenever they could. And I'm proud to say that I belong to, and so do you, uh, uh, idiom of religion. 
of faith that still holds that high and honors that and does that. That's a true story that should be told to a secular world, to a world that we live in this day and age. Because you see, the society in which we live in right now is becoming a society in which faith, in which in particular Christianity, is being shoved outside the circle. And it's happening in various and quiet ways. And it's right at this point that I should and I will remind everyone of Jesus' words in the text for today. What our Lord whispered to us should be spoken from the housetops. These days our culture is neither religious nor anti-religious. It's just preoccupied, which is just another way of saying it's secular. Christianity is being pushed aside for whatever happens to be popular and in some places where it is taught, where Christianity is taught, the truth has been so watered down it really doesn't make much difference. And here is the unfortunate part of the story. You and I, who call ourselves Christians, have something that ought to be shouted from the rooftops. And knowing that some would is why Jesus warns them that in doing so, it will, and I'm quoting, put a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and the man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Like I said earlier, that's happening in my household right now. Maybe it is yours too. I know it is for so many of you. We've never faced that in America, at least not people our age. Maybe we have taken so much for granted that we just think the Lord's going to come snap his fingers and it's going to make it all happen like a salt and pepper shaker and just make things taste better now for us. Maybe we're spoiled. Maybe all these things are true. Maybe we haven't paid a big enough price ourselves or taught our children that. Now, I'm not asking anyone to start preaching on the street corner, nor am I suggesting necessarily that we write a letter to our editor. It might be helpful, but... It's not where I'm headed. I'm simply saying that we ought to make our faith a part of our daily speech more often and that we ought to do it gracefully and graciously with a smile on our face and confidence and a lack of fear. Leave the sermons to the preachers, but do what laymen do best, and that is speak like a satisfied customer and do it from the roof. There will be those who will no doubt think you a bit odd, fight with you, want to argue with you, but I promise you it isn't quite like being burned at the stake or being thrown to one of Nero's lions, not yet anyway. It will get there if we don't start speaking up. And with it all, be sure. Be sure to thank God that because Christianity has been such a big part of American history, for as long as its existence. And most of us do have a housetop from which to speak. So thank God for that. And don't whisper, folks, not when you're living on a housetop that God has provided for you to speak on. May God so bless each and all of us in our endeavor. Please stand for prayer. <clears throat> we bow our heads in prayer. O Lord our God, you have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and you have again brought us to your house of prayer to praise your goodness and to ask for your gifts. So accept now in your endless mercy the sacrifice of our worship and thanksgiving and grant us those requests which would be wholesome for us, not necessarily the ones that we think we need and want, but the ones you know we need, Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Each week in our Sunday prayers, we pray by name for family here at Bethesda, asking your blessings and your presence in their lives. This morning we pray for Marilyn Kaiser, for Andy, for Brand Kaiser, and all the children. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, in particular, we pray for those that are suffering from illnesses and disease, 
of all kinds, both severe and maybe just annoyance. But we pray for Marilyn Swain this morning, for Isla White, for Judy Drake, for Pastor Art, for Paul Schnoes, for Jean Montgomery, for Della Schmidt and Ken Lorang, for Zoe Jones, for Morgan Gerby, for Irene Becker and Marianne Allen, for Herbie Gazel, for Betty Stevenson, for Vi Salas, for Cheryl Huddleston, and for Bob and Liz Anderson. And Lord, we name those to you, maybe that I haven't got named. We name them to you if they are in our heart, in our silence. Lord, we simply pray that through miracle or medicine, you may heal. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We also pray, Lord, for those serving in the military, both at home and abroad. Send guardian angels to guide and guard them safely to and from their destination. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We also pray, Lord, as a congregation and as a group of believers here this morning who are asking for help. The world seems to be up against something that it cannot stop, change, correct, or control. Sometimes, Lord, we recognize uh, the bigness of this and all the lessons we can learn from it, and other times we just swing through it without even recognizing it. So, Lord, help us to remember that you always have, still do, and always will have complete control over everything that happens on this earth. Grant to each of us as a complete faith as possible while here on this earth. We pray for healing for those who have contracted this COVID disease and safety from it for those who have not. Help us to focus more on, on you than upon ourselves. Help us to be more aware than unulent and to be more faithful than fearful. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We also pray, Lord, for our nation for our leaders and for all the people who call themselves citizens. Lord, we pray for all of these people. You have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant, Lord, that we remember your generosity and constantly strive to do your will. Forgive us when we don't. Teach us the difference between your will and our wants. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and honorable living. Save us from all the violence and discord and confusion that Satan is throwing our way. Keep us from being prideful and arrogant about things that we should be humble and repentant over. And keep us from every evil course of action that Satan does throw our way personally and collectively. Support us in defending our liberty and grant those who we have entrusted with authority of governing over us. Grant them, Lord, a spirit of wisdom that there may be justice and peace in our nation. Help us to be that one nation under God that we all claim to be. So into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom and what we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the preface in our worship this morning on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for the forgiveness of sin this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all, always.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant and give you each his peace. Please be seated. We finish our worship this morning with our last. birthdays this week. Since this guy has been a little kid this high, every week he tried to get a birthday song to sing to him. It was always his birthday. <laughs> now, yesterday was your birthday? Yes. How old are you? 27. <laughs> I don't know there's any hope for you. <laughs> anyway, 
We're all going to sing happy. Anybody else got a birthday, by the way? Uh, this was all for you. I <laughs> <laughs> want you to take a bow in a speech. <laughs> somebody this week. Here, here you go. 